President John Dramani Mahama and Professor Jenana Opokwajiman. So what are their strengths? Tell me if you know it. So we think from the analysis that we picked up today, we think that the strength of this ticket is that Professor Jenana Opokwajiman comes to the political table with a clean uh, comes to the political table with a, a clean record. So corruption has been a very major issue these days. There is no known case yet of uh, corruption against Professor Jenan Opokwa Jiman. She comes also with a strong academic background. She's a professor, a social sciences professor. Um, she also comes with a bilingual background. She speaks French. That's, uh, that's one of her strengths. It's going to be uh, Jenan Opokwa Jiman's strength coming onto this ticket. Another strength of hers is that she is uh, a woman, and for the first time, she's the, the uh, top ticket is showing a gender balance. So that's also going for Jaina Nopukwajiman. The gender balance is one of the strengths. The other strength is that she's coming with a, a sort of clean anti-corruption record, if you like. She's also coming with an important academic uh, background, apart from uh, just she being um, a former vice chancellor. She's also a professor at the university. And indeed, she's the first female vice chancellor of any tertiary university institution in Ghana. Cape Coast University had her as vice chancellor. So that's going to be considered as one of her strengths as well. Uh, and then we will come to her weakness. Have I left any strength out? Okay, she has a strong family background. We're hearing over the last two days that she has uh, three children, all of whom are PhDs. That means she's a disciplined mother. She was successful in raising children. So that's also strength for Jane Nano Pokwajiman. Let's come to her weaknesses. And that's where the controversy will begin. After that, we'll come to her opportunities and we'll come to her threats. So what are her weaknesses from the assessment that we made? Her weakness, from what we made, would have to be her record. And you don't have to agree with us. But her weakness will have to be her record. Why do we say that? This is an election between NDC and MPP. So uh, NDC's record and MPP's record. This election is going to be what? Round three of John Mahama and Nana Kufuado. So John Mahama has done four years as president. Nana Kufuado would have done four years as president when the election occurs. So it's going to be a record versus a record. Now, Professor Jenano Pukwajiman was the Minister of Education. If you look at the MPP's record and the NDC's record, and both parties will tell their record, but one, one area, one uh, sector that the NDC, MPP has completely trounced the NDC is education. Now, Professor Jindan Nopokwadiman is the immediate predecessor of the MPP's Ministry of Education. And education is the MPP's strong point. Of course, you know why, why I'm saying that. Free SHS. Free SHS has put 1.2 million Ghanaian children in school without paying school fees. That is the strongest point of the MPP. And in fact, you hear NDC communicators say that, as for MPP, if you tell them that energy is bad, they say free SHS. If you tell them that the market is bad, they say free SHS. If you tell them there's banking crisis, they say free SHS. Looking like the real only thing the MPP have to say, which as a matter of statistical, mathematical, sociological, anthropological record, trounces the NDC, is education. Jenana Opokwajiman is the immediate past uh, minister for education. So that's, her, that's going to be a weakness. This is the record, and that's going to be a big weakness. She will have to confront the education conversation. And Picking Jenan Opokwajiman suggests that the election is also going to be about education. MPP are going to say we have achieved free SHS. What is Jenan Opokwajiman going to say? So that probably is one of her weakness. The other part, which may be a weakness, is internal party cohesion. From what we are hearing, in terms of what happened um, in, the, in the main event, the, some of the party members were not particularly excited. It would appear that President Mahama is at the same place that uh, Nana Kufado was in 2008. You remember when Nana Kufado nominated uh, Alhaji Muhammadu Baumia for the first time in 2008 at the Alisa Hotel in Accra, the meeting actually broke off. Nana Hininto was a general secretary of the MPP and he had to control the MPP key national executive members who were very unhappy with Nana Kufado for the selection of Dr. Baumia because the point was made that Dr. Baumia was not a party person. Of course, later on, Dr. Baumia uh, grew up to become the MPP's trump card. But in that particular meeting, at that particular place in 2008, people felt that the Naku Fado had made a choice outside the party. Jenano Pukwajiman is facing the same problem. Now, if you look at what happened on Monday, after the national executive meeting, the big announcement was made by Sami Jemfi. Sami Jemfi is the... Um, the national uh, spokesperson of the party, the, the national executive spokesperson. Now, this announcement of the presidential running mate is the most important announcement after 
the announcement of John Dramani Mahama himself. Party chairman chaired the meeting. Party general secretary was there. None of them made the official announcement. The official announcement was made by Sami Jinfi. I stand to be corrected, but that's what all the media captured. The official announcement of Jinan Opukwa Jiman's nomination by consensus of the National Executive Committee of the NDC was made by Sami Jinfi. So then you see that perhaps in the party she has some more work to do. We are hearing also that the National Council of Elders meeting could not even take place because of disagreement. It may or may not be true, but it's widely believed by the, the speculators and those of us who are media undergrounders. That's what we all picked up, that the National Council meeting did not occur because of disagreement. So she has some distance to travel to bring the party together, to bring the party to give her the acceptability that she, she needs within the internal party coalition. If you look at political history in the recent past, where is this ticket? Which part of our history is this ticket going to mimic? Or which part of our history actually mimics this ticket? And I'll show you. This ticket is mimicking our history in 2004. When the NDC were in opposition and they were coming into government, or when they were in opposition and they wanted to come into government. So it mimics 2004 and it mimics 2008. Let's have analysis of what happened in 2004 with the running mate choice and what happened in 2008 with the running mate choice of the opposition party. John Mahama was in the saddle in the running mate uh, for 2008, you remember. So in 2004, Professor Mills was fighting another election. He was fighting John Kufour, the incumbent president. He selected a running mate in the person of Mohammed Alhaji Mumuni. Alhaji Mumuni mimics Jinnan Opokwa in many ways. He's a clean guy. He didn't have a corruption tag. He had some, some background behind him. But the question at that time was, coming from opposition, was Professor Mills' ticket going to arrest attention? And I use that advisedly, arrest attention. Was it going to be a ticket that will arrest attention? So Mohammed Mumuni was nominated in 2004. It appeared that the ticket did not arrest attention. And J.A. Kufour coasted to an easy victory in 2004's election. The NDC did well. In fact, the NDC did much better than had been anticipated, such that people actually believed that that election should have gone into a second round in the presidential election. Something unfortunate happened. Jacob Echebelamte, who was Minister for Education, had to incidentally declare the first result at the Osu Castle in that 2004 election. Mohamed Mumuni, of course, went to court. That was the first election petition. It was unfortunately dismissed. But everyone who was observing thought that the NDC had done very, very well in that election. Looking at the propaganda of the campaign, everyone thought they were going to be flatly defeated. They were not flatly defeated. John Kufour won just over 50% of the vote. So that was 2004's election. Professor Mills' ticket was unable to arrest the attention of Ghanaians. Come 2008. And the NDC felt that they were back at the same place in 2008. 2008 was the NDC trying hard to come into power. The MPP were fighting a third term election. And so the NDC ticket needed to arrest attention. And boom, it did. The nomination of John Mahama in March 2008 arrested the attention of many of the neutrals. Here was John Mahama, who had been thought of within the context of Ghanaian politics as one of those who were on the better side of the NDC, better quote and unquote. Now, I'm saying that because historically, the NDC has been seen as a party coming from a revolution. And a party coming from a revolution means that they are quite brutal. And so the key actors of the NDC were thought to be revolutionary activists. Eboteria, E.T. Mensa, Peter Podugbe, these, they call themselves Cades. They were revolutionary activists. The Ghanaians were looking for another side of the NDC. John Mahama, Mohamed Chambers, uh, Mike Hama, they represented that, that part of the NDC. And John Mahama in particular, as communication minister, was a clear distinction between the old NDC and the new one. Having nominated John Mahama as the running mate in 2008, most of the neutrals thought that this is a ticket to look out for, especially as at the time, the MPP had 17 people competing uh, for the running mate. Of course, Akufado won it, but it was such a the difficult victory. People thought they had spent a lot of state money running that election. Corruption tag was against the MPP. And so the Professor Mills ticket needed to arrest attention. And in 2008, it did arrest attention. Will this ticket arrest attention? We, we have no answers for the questions that we asked today. You have to make that decision. We are still on the weaknesses of Jenan Opokwajiman. Let's now move to the opportunities, as we have done 10 minutes already on this one. We'll be wrapping up soon. What are the opportunities that Jenan Opokwajiman has? The opportunity she has is the freshness. She's new. She's fresh. We don't know what she thinks about inflation. We don't know what she thinks about, well, education, we can tell. But we don't know what she thinks about banking crisis. We don't know what she thinks about uh, local government. We don't know what she thinks about one district, one factory. We don't know what she thinks about one village, one dam. 
We don't know what she thinks about uh, big size of government, 126 ministers. We don't know what she thinks about it. We don't know what she thinks about uh, the MPP administration in general. So there's a wide opportunity for her to be able to explore the minefield. And if she succeeds, then she would have done very well. She's yet to speak, and that's already uh, taking too long after 24 hours of the nomination. She's yet to address a press conference. That first press conference is a big opportunity for Jena Nopukwajiman. It's either a make or break for her. She goes into that press conference with a clear view of everyone trying to understand this distinguished professor that we have been told about. When she was Minister of Education, I don't remember her conducting one single interview on a major platform. If you Google it, you, you only find an interview conducted by Ghana Web quite recently. But at the time that she ran the Education Ministry, we don't remember her making significant recognizable uh, 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 and, and um, uh, recordable statements in parliament. We, didn't, we don't remember her doing that. Of course, she was not a member of parliament, but she appeared before parliament as a minister of education. We don't remember her on the propaganda bandwagon of the 2016 campaign. Do you remember Nano Pukwajiman saying anything during the 2016 campaign? She virtually said nothing. She was carrying a portfolio that was significant, a portfolio that was under threat in the campaign because the MPP was saying free SHS, and she carried the portfolio. Samir Okujeta Blackwa, one of her deputies, was, was more vociferous in speaking about the Ministry of Education than, than, than she was. There was issues of teachers' allowance and all that. No, no one really heard her speaking publicly. Of course, she was doing her work as minister. Most likely, she did her work brilliantly in parliament. But the majority of the Ghanaian people are not aware of, of, of her psyche. So when she comes out in a press conference, which should happen soon, if it doesn't happen after one week, people are going to raise questions about it. What's the running mate saying? She has to say something. Sometime this week, she would have to come out and speak. And that's an opportunity for her. The opportunity for her is to come out and speak and seize the moment and grab the attention of Ghanaians and push the gender agenda and show that she's competent, capable, and she has the effrontery to run a campaign to become the vice president of Ghana. That's the opportunity that Jena Nopokwa Ajiman has, which she has to take. That opportunity is also the threat. This, this is interesting. The same opportunity that Jane has is also the threat. Because when she comes to speak, she will have to speak as a politician. She will have to speak as a campaigner. She will have to speak as a running mate speaking in an election year. When she does that, she would have to attack the MPP, not attack personality. She would have to attack their record. She has to say that one district, one factory is a failure. She has to say that one village, one dam is a failure. She has to say that Akufuado is a failure. She has to say that John Mahama has been more successful than Akufuado. She has to do a comparative analysis in that press conference and say that our four years is better than their four years. The big, biggest minefield, she has to talk about the Ministry of Education. And she would have to show that her tenure at the Ministry of Education is better than the tenure of what we are seeing now. The threat, therefore, is that the MPP are going to come at her. They are waiting for her, and as soon as she speaks, they are going to drive into her. She will have to be ready to confront the intellectual formidability of, um, of uh, Dr. Educhum, the Deputy Minister of Education. She would have to confront the political formidability of Matthew Poku Prempe, the Minister of Education. She would have to confront the rhetoric of Dr. Mahamadou Baumia, the Vice President. Eventually, she would have to even confront the, the forcefulness of President Akufuado's propaganda. She would have to deal, that's the threat. So if you look at all of this, the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat, I think that Jenano Pokwajiman is in the saddle and she would have to deal with it when it comes. So that's the John Mahama ticket. That is our assessment of the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. But there's something I need to show you before we go to the other ones. And we are going to show you tonight. We're going to run through them very quickly. Ten other tickets that could have been the NDC ticket. Ten of them. They're going to show them in the same fashion. Now, quickly, uh, Joe Biden, the U.S. Vice President, has also uh, said that he's going to nominate a woman for the running mate position. You know that since 1992 up until 2016, Ghanaians and Americans vote the same way. America votes first in November, we vote in December. They vote right, we vote right. They vote left, we vote left. That's what we all do. Joe Biden has said something. Have a look at what Biden said. And John Mahama has done it. So the Democratic Party in America and the Democratic Party in Ghana are thinking alike about their running mates. Here's what Biden said. Quickly, let's listen to it. We'll be right back. I commit that I will, in fact, appoint a, uh, pick a woman to be vice president. There are a number of women who are qualified to be president tomorrow. I would pick a woman to be my vice president. 
You just committed here tonight that your running mate, if you get the nomination, will be a woman? Yes. The vice president committed to picking a woman as his running mate. If you get the nomination, will you? Uh, in all likelihood, I, I will. Uh, for me, it's not just uh, nominating uh, or, uh, a woman. It is making sure that we have a progressive women, and there are progressive women out there. So my very strong tendency is to move in that direction. Oh, oh, oh.